Hey friends, my name is Matt Tinkler. I'm here with Ableton Tips by Production Music Live. And in this video, I'm gonna take you through your first 15 minutes in Ableton Live 12 to get you up and running making music with the software. Let's dive in. Okay, so when you first open up the software, you'll be met with a screen somewhat similar to this. To start with, let's just go through a few of the different sections so that you kind of understand how the software is laid out and just where you can find basic things here and there. So up the top, we have this section called the control bar, and this is where you can find aspects or controls that allow you to change certain things about how your session, which is kind of like your document of Ableton Live, uh, behaves. So this is where you can find things like up the top, we have the speed of play back of our session, otherwise known as our beats per minute or tempo. We have the scale or key of certain clips within our session. We have transport controls like play, stop, record, and other stuff in here. We have looping controls, and we also have some controls over on the right that allow us to do things like uh, monitor how well our computer is behaving with our session by seeing things like computer processing usage and so on and so forth. Then on the left, we have a section called the browser. And this browser allows us to effectively browse through sounds, effects, devices, instruments, samples. If you, for whatever reason you would like to hide the browser, you can always do so by going up to the top left and clicking on this kind of divided rectangle up here. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the main section of Ableton Live, which is this middle section, which is currently showing a view known as the session view, which is where we can see all of these different tracks here, which are effectively like layers of sound within our session, shown vertically from top to bottom. And this session view here is also switchable to another view, which is called the arrangement view. And we can switch to the arrangement view in one of two different ways. We can go up to the top right, of our window and click on these three horizontal lines, or we can press the tab key on our computer keyboard. Let's go ahead and just take a little bit of a look at navigating around the arrangement view first of all. First, as you would have noticed there, I can just click and drag to select an area within the arrangement view across any of these different tracks that we have loaded up in our session. We can also zoom in or out in a few different ways. The most easy and simple way is to move your cursor up to the top above where we have these little numbers until it turns into this magnifying glass icon. And then we can just click and drag up or down to zoom in and out and left and right to scroll side to side. You can also do so by holding down the command or control key on your keyboard and scrolling up or down. We can zoom in or out and we can scroll side to side by holding down shift and scrolling up or down with our keyboard. And we can also, if you have a middle mouse click button on your, uh, on your mouse, you can hold down the middle mouse click and click or drag left and right or up and down to move around your session that way. And this only works in Ableton Live 12. So now that we kind of understand how to navigate around the arrangement view a little bit, let's keep going with the rest of how the software is laid out with this bottom section down here. So this main section in the bottom is known as the device view. And this is where we can see any devices such as instruments or audio effects that we have loaded up onto any of the tracks that we have selected in either our arrangement or our session view. So now that we have a good idea of how the program is laid out, let's go ahead and actually make some sound in the program. So there are two main ways of making sound inside of Ableton Live. One is by loading up what's called a virtual instrument and sending that virtual instrument some kind of MIDI information, which is the first way we're actually going to make some sound. And the second way is by using an audio track to work with pre-recorded or recorded audio signals or information. To start with, let's, buy, let's go and work on a MIDI track and import some kind of instrument that we can use to make some sound. So to do this, let's go over to our browser. Let's go to the sound section in our library. And up the top, you'll notice this filters section. This may look slightly different depending on just your system setup, if you've used the software before or not. And if you want it to change how this filter section looks, we can simply right click where it says filters and show or hide any of these different sections here. I'm gonna leave type, sounds, and character open, and we can use these filters or these tags within these filter groups to filter the sounds in our browser by certain characteristics. To make this really simple, let's just go ahead and grab a piano sound. So I'm gonna go close up this character section here and just click on piano and keys in sounds. I'm gonna scroll down 
And you might have more or less sounds in here than me, but I'm gonna go down and find the grand piano sound, which is something that's available in every single edition of Ableton Live 12. We can now add this to our first MIDI track by simply clicking and dragging this onto that first MIDI track. And when we do that, you'll notice a few things happen. First, this MIDI track is now called One Grand Piano. Second, we can see down in the bottom in our device view, we now have this Grand Piano device. And third, the track has been what's called armed. We can see that by going over to the right of our track and seeing this red icon here. Now, in order to actually get this to play some sound, what we need to do is send this track some MIDI. And there are a few ways we can do this. The easiest way is to send this track some MIDI with our computer keyboard by turning our computer keyboard into kind of like a piano keyboard. Now, in order to do this, we need to go up to the top on our control bar and make sure this little icon here that looks like a, or a keyboard, a piano keyboard, is engaged in yellow. We can also do so by pressing the M key on our computer keyboard. And now with this track armed, with this red icon actually enabled red, using the middle row of keys from A to L on our computer keyboard will be the white keys as a piano keyboard, and we can actually make this grand piano make some sound. The second way that we can actually get this piano to make some sound is by creating what's called a MIDI clip, which is effectively a block that stores some kind of musical information that we can then send to this grand piano. So to do this, let's zoom into our arrangement view a little bit by holding down command and scrolling up and select this range of time here, which is four bars, right click and come down to insert empty MIDI clip. And when we do so, we'll notice that this bottom view here now changes to our clip view, which is what I talked about earlier. Now, what we can actually do in this uh, view here is input some notes by simply double clicking anywhere in this area. Now I can play back these notes by moving my cursor in the arrangement view and clicking right at the very start of where this blue clip is and just pressing the space bar on my computer keyboard. We can also go ahead and maybe adjust the lengths of some of these notes by moving our cursor towards the edge of it. If we need to zoom in a little bit, we can also navigate this clip view uh, in the same way we navigated our arrangement view by holding down command or control and scrolling up or down. So let's lengthen this C note, lengthen this E note, maybe lengthen this D note. Maybe we can even add some more notes up here up here, move this around, lengthen this. Now, if we want, we can also kind of play MIDI here inside of our clip by using the MIDI preview button, which is this little headphone icon here. And by having this enabled, we can hear what the note will sound like when we input any note in our, uh, in our clip or select any of the notes or click on any of these notes here on the left in our piano roll. Now, if you're not kind of musically inclined, we can also use the scale feature inside of the MIDI clip to highlight notes within a certain scale so that any of those notes we know will be kind of within key with one another. To do this, all we need to do is go over to the left-hand side of our clip, select a scale from the list. For instance, here I have C major currently selected make sure this little flat sharp icon or scale mode icon is engaged. And then we can go up to the top of our clip where it says highlight scale and click on this. And now any of these rows that are highlighted in purple, if we add a note to any of these, we can be pretty rest assured that it's gonna sound mostly nice with all of the other notes that we have in our clip. Cool. So let's loop this section in our arrangement by zooming in and selecting this first two bars. And then I'm gonna use the loop command, which is command or control and L. And now you'll see this loop brace in our arrangement view covers this two bars, which means that when my playhead gets to the end of this loop brace, it'll jump straight back to the start. We 
can also change the speed of the playback of our session by going up to the top left and changing this tempo control by clicking and dragging it down or up. And we can also hear the kind of tempo or pulse of our session by engaging the metronome, which is these two little circles here. So let's go ahead and explore another aspect of creating sound in the software, which is audio effects. I'm gonna go ahead and press shift and tab and now add an audio effect to this track here by going over to my audio effects category in my library. And here we have a bunch of audio effects that are pre-installed in the software. And audio effects are devices that allow us to manipulate any incoming audio signal. So for instance, here I can go ahead and get something, maybe say like a delay effect, come down to delay and click and drag this again, just either onto that grand piano track or onto the device view after this grand piano device. And now we get to hear what this grand piano would sound like run through a delay audio effect. And let's go ahead and maybe add a reverb after this delay as well. So let's scroll around, find reverb, click and drag that. And I'm gonna click and drag this after the delay. So we have this grand piano making the sound, the delay processing the sound, and then the reverb processing the sound. And that is basically what we can do here on our uh, MIDI track in order to kind of adjust the sound that we've created. If we want, we can turn off any of these devices here, these audio effects by simply clicking on the device activator in the top left. And we can fold these also by double clicking on the title bar of them so that they just move out of the way a little bit. So now that we've learned how to work on a MIDI track, let's go ahead and have a look at an audio track. So to do this, let's go ahead and find a sample in our browser. And in order to find a sample, I can again, just go ahead and go to my library, click on all, open up my filters, and I can go to content or type, and I can find maybe one shot. I can go to sounds. I could find some kind of a kick drum sound, open up drums here, format, Ableton, or another way to find a sound is to simply go ahead and search in our bar here, in our search bar. And let's search for a sound like a kick drum. So I could search for kick. And now we'll see in our browser. A bunch of samples, which are audio files that we can preview and then drag onto an audio track in our session. For instance, I might go ahead and grab this kick 909. And I can just click and drag this onto an audio track in our session, zoom in, and we can see this audio file here on the audio track. Now with this audio file or this audio clip on our audio track, we can do a few things. I can click and drag it, move it around. I can shorten the length of it by moving my cursor to the right hand side, pulling it in a little bit. I could duplicate it by holding down the Alt or Option key on my keyboard and clicking and dragging. Or I could copy it by selecting it, pressing Command and C, and then paste it anywhere by selecting that area, pressing Command or Control and V to paste it. Or I can duplicate a whole area by selecting that whole area and either pressing Command or Control and D to duplicate that selected area. And now I have this kick drum on every single beat of this first two bars of my arrangement view here. Now that we have two tracks here, we can also go ahead and balance these two tracks and change their levels by going over to the right hand side and adjusting the track volume control, which is this slider underneath the number of the track here. So I could turn down the grand piano, maybe turn down this kick drum. And now we have changed the sonic balance of these sounds. Lastly, let's take a little bit of a look at just organizing our session a little bit. So I'm not using these two tracks here, this MIDI track and this audio track. So I can select these two just by clicking it and pressing the delete key on my keyboard, I can delete this track. 
Let's do that with the second audio track here too. And so now we're just left with our grand piano and our kick drum track. If I want to, I can rename this grand piano track by right clicking on it and selecting rename. And I can call this grand, or I can just call this piano, maybe. I can also reorder these two tracks so I could have the kick be first and the piano be second. And maybe we could color this kick drum, say red instead of green. And I could actually transfer this red color here to the clips on this track by right clicking on the kick track and selecting assign track color to clips. Now, of course, there's a whole lot more that we can do with the software, but we can also go ahead and say, maybe add audio effects to this kick, or maybe add even some more sounds or more loops and all that as well. Maybe add some more instruments into our session. But now that you know the basics, you should hopefully feel confident enough to jump into the software and start playing around with and making your own music. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments below and check out a link in the description for a full course on Ableton Live 12 from start to finish so that you can learn the software inside and out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something and I'll see you in a future video.